review of A Theory of Justice by John Rawls, first published 1972, Chapter 1 Justice as Fairness Section 2 The Subject of Justice. Rawls claims that the primary subject of justice is the basic structure of society, which he believes is the way major social institutions distribute fundamental rights and duties and determine the division of advantages from social cooperation. Interestingly, he lists the following as some of these institutions, freedom of thought and liberty of conscience, competitive markets, private property in the means of production, and monogamous family. Rawls believes that taking together these social institutions, define men's rights and duties, and influence their life prospects. He then states that these institutions favor certain starting places over others, thus creating deep inequalities. It is here that Rawls sees a role for justice in addressing these very real disparities in life chances. Rawls reasons that his inquiry should limit itself to formulating a reasonable conception of justice for the basic structure of society conceived for the time being as a closed system isolated from other societies. He goes on to make what I see as a most extraordinary claim that the significance of this special case is obvious and needs no explanation. It is natural to conjecture that once we have a sound theory for this case, the remaining problems of justice will prove more tractable in light of it. This means that Rawls will not be considering the justice of institutions and social practices generally, in relation to such areas as the law of nations and of relations between states. He will instead only be examining principles of justice that regulate a well-ordered society, where everyone is presumed to act justly and to do their part in upholding just institutions. Rawls maintains that the justice of a social scheme depends primarily on how fundamental rights and duties are assigned, and on the economic opportunities and social conditions in the various sectors of society. He makes a distinction between 1. Strict Compliance Theory, SCT, and 2. Partial Compliance Theory, PCT. PCT studies the principles that govern how to deal with injustice and comprises such topics as the theory of punishment, the doctrine of just war, and ways to oppose unjust regimes. At this point I became a little confused in that it seemed to me without any explanation, SCT was somehow transformed into something Rawls termed ideal theory. Rawls argues that although PCT constitutes the pressing and urgent matters which are things we face in everyday life, he will nevertheless begin with ideal theory. This is because he maintains it is the only sound basis for the systematic grasp of generally more pressing day-to-day -day matters. Rawls makes, what seems at this stage, the very reasonable assertion that, to fully understand the conception of justice, we must first make explicit the conception of social cooperation from which it derives. He believes that the concept of justice is defined by the role of its principles, in assigning rights and duties, and in defining the appropriate division of social advantages. This view of justice he is promoting does not, in Rawls' view, conflict with traditional notions of justice. Rawls then refers to what he understands is Aristotle's vision of justice, which is to refrain from gaining some advantage for oneself by seizing what belongs to another, such as another's property, reward, or office, etc., this understanding does however presuppose an account of what properly belongs to a person, and what is due to that person in the first place. Despite this Rawls believes Aristotle would not be adverse to extending the scope of justice, to include any misunderstanding to entitlements derived from social institutions, and the legitimate expectations to which they give rise. Rawls appears to nail his theory of justice firmly to an institutional masthead. It should be interesting to see how this strategy fares in the stormy seas ahead.